Welcome once again to the Staples Center. It's packed and they are ready to go to cheer on Kobe Bryant and the Lakers as they continue their battle for a championship against the Celtics. Lakers trying to even the series up at two games apiece. The Celtics hoping to take a commanding 3-1 lead in this best of seven series. And good evening everyone. Welcome to game four of the 2008 NBA Finals. Along with Mark Jackson and Jeff Van Gundy, Mike Green on hand, Michelle Tafoya will join us shortly. Game three was an ugly affair, but the Lakers could care less how it looked. They got in the win column and they got themselves right back into this series. Jeff, what was the key for them? How do they turn it around and how do they continue to do that in game four? Well, Kobe Bryant stopped giving the Celtics defense too much credit. After game one and two, he said you couldn't get to the basket against them. In game three, he attacked early, he attacked often, he got to the free throw line 18 times. So late in the game, because he had driven so much, now his pull-up jump shot was available to him and he became so much more efficient throughout the course of this series. Game two, 11 for 23. Game three, 12 for 20, 60% and a career finals high, 36 points. And that attack mode filtered down to the defensive end where the Lakers had one of their best defensive performances of the playoffs. Meanwhile for the Celtics, while Bryant was brilliant, Kevin Garnett and Paul Pierce were not in game three. They've had a great playoff run, but they've got to turn it around. What happened in game three and what do they do to change in game four, Mark? Well, what you have to do is give some of the credit to the Los Angeles Lakers, but also to the Boston Celtics. They went away from Paul Pierce and Kevin Garnett. Garnett is a guy that has to have touches on the low post. Put him in a position to prosper. Also, Pierce, isolation situations. Allow these guys to have impact on the ball games. Games one and two, high percentage, 48 percent, getting 45 and a half points per game. Game three, they struggled. 23 percent from the field, not putting them in position. That's why they didn't have a good game three. They have to find their offense. It starts with them. Not just the big three, but Ray Allen, Paul Pierce, and Garnett have to be effective. You know, the important game four right now here at the Staples Center once again. Many in the crowd as they're filing in. So many of the celebrities. They packed it in the other night. They'll be lining up again tonight. And the coaches sending their teams out from the locker room with their pregame speeches. Single-minded goal tonight should be to win. Should be to win. Your focus should be, what do I have to do to help my team get this win? What do I have to do to help my team get this win? That, that has to be your goal. But the bottom line at the end of the day, we got to play. We got to have great focus, and our focus should be on nothing else but winning. Do what you do to win. Make sure you know what your roles are. Make good shots. Take care of the guys. Do the job so far. We're set for the tip off of game four between the Lakers and the Celtics. Boston up two to one. Our Spanish language version of tonight's game, presented by ESPN Deportes, use the SAP button on your television. As we're set to go, the officiating crew for tonight, Steve Javi, the crew chief, Tom Washington, working his first NBA Finals game. The Lakers trying to make it two in a row. And in the starting lineup for the Boston Celtics, Rajon Rondo sprained his ankle in the third quarter of game three. But he's out there playing a key for the Boston Celtics, how effective he'll be. He's been receiving treatment in the past couple of days, but he's out there to start. Odom, quick drive to the basket, blocked by Garnett for the goal's end. As he knocked it after it hit off the backboard. Two points for Odom, who didn't have his first field goal until the way of the third quarter in game three. Love the first possession call by Phil Jackson. You have a guy that you say is confused. Your job as a coach is to get him unconfused. Gets him in an isolation situation. Good basket to start the game by Odom. Ray Allen had a terrific game three and a good start to game four. And Allen led them in scoring with 25 points, and he gets them on the board tonight.
Fisher throws it away. And with more on the Rondo situation, let's check in with Michelle DeFoy. Hey, Michelle. Hey, you guys. Well, Rajon Rondo said after game three he was about 50% with that left ankle. And today he described himself as 89.555%. But on a serious note, he expects to be full speed. He thinks the only problem he might have is fighting through picks on defense. He did not take a cortisone shot because, like his teammate Paul Pierce, he doesn't like the needles. But Doc Rivers expects that ankle to be, quote, a non-factor, Mike. He didn't practice yesterday again. It's the left ankle. So for a guy who really shoots with his right hand, that's the foot he jumps off of. Fisher inside. He draws the foul. And Fisher will go to the line. This is what happened to Rondo in the opening minute of the third quarter. Now, he did return later in the game, but was clearly not the same. And although Rondo is a young player, he provides speed and quickness, something that Celtics don't have a heck of a lot of, Jeff. Well, that's the best part of his game. It's a speed, quickness, uh, rebounding type of game. And Doc Rivers didn't play him down the stretch of game three because of his injury. He played, he didn't play him down the stretch because he was ineffective the entire game. And so Rondo has to have more of a type of game two performance where he was outstanding. That's when he had 16 assists. And I think anybody else with a bad injury, you test them if you're the Lakers defensively. But the Lakers like Rondo on the floor because it allows Kobe Bryant to roll. That's a three. Won't go. Allen the rebound. And here comes Ray Allen, who has had a superb final so far, not just game three, but overall. He's the team's leading scorer. And he's shooting over 50% from the field. Garnett with Bryant on him on the switch. Allen for three. Rushed it way off. But he wasn't ready to shoot. His hands and feet were not set. Bryant to the basket, and he draws the foul. Kobe Bryant, who took 18 free throws in game three, will get his first opportunity here in game four. Phil Jackson, you guys touched upon this at the top. He said that Kobe Bryant created the tone, the attack mode that this team had right from the start at both ends of the floor. And you're talking about a team, a young basketball team that found itself down 2-0 in the NBA Finals. That's when you look at your star player, you look at your leader, and see their body language, how they respond. Kobe Bryant sent the message to the guy. And what he's doing is he's getting to the basket in transition. And for the Celtics, that's got to be discouraging because like in the last possession, they had a chance to get back, load their defense, and take away that left-handed driving seam. Lane violation, it's going to be on Perkins. He stepped in before Bryant released the ball, so he'll get another chance. Bryant missed seven free throws. And he's an excellent free throw shooter. Well, they call a foul, excuse me. It's a loose ball foul on Perkins. So Perkins picks up his first, and the Lakers will inbound with a new 24. And you see the mindset of the Lakers to start this ball game. A drive by Odom, a drive by Fisher, a drive by Bryant. They are being aggressive. Nice pass. Odom to Gasol. And a strong start for the Lakers. And they did that same thing in game two. You trap Kobe Bryant. He takes the trap, hits the man at the free throw line, and then big to big, high low. Garnett double team. Bryant trying to take it. He takes it right out of his hands. Doc Rivers screaming for a foul. Pass, though, stolen by Pierce the other end. And then Pierce gets bumped by Bryant, lost the ball. Bryant, attack mode, out to Gasol. Air ball. And here comes Rondo. Lakers do a good job getting back, and a technical foul on Doc Rivers, who continues to yell at Steve Jabby. Well, one shot technical coming up. He thought Garnett was mauled here. And it continues as they came down the floor. The next time down, Fisher will shoot the technical. And Fisher misses. And again, the Lakers struggled from the line. They missed 13 of them in game three. He hopped right off the bench. His star player having the ball wrestled away from him. But even more important than whether that was a foul or not, Kobe Bryant, again, roaming off of Rondo with no regard for his ability to hurt him as he double-teams. 
Garnett, who has really struggled shooting in this series, is 35% from the field. Gets inside. That's what he said he's going to do. The second effort won't go. Tips it again. Radmanovic comes away. Fisher. Nice pass to Odom. Oh, the Lakers look sharp early. Seven straight points, and they're up nine to two. And here's what you love about it. Odom Gasol running the floor. Big men running the floor. They put so much pressure on your defense. That's how you get it going offense. High percentage plays in transition. Odom already with more field goals than the entire game three. And that's what Rondo has to do for the Celtics. And Kobe Bryant didn't try to even get under or over. He's just laid on the screen. Rondo's got to shoot the ball like that. Well, the Lakers playing a numbers game. They're not going to make any adjustments. They're going to dare Rondo to be a jump shooter and continue to knock him down. Gasol also slow to get started scoring in the last game. Odom again. Odom three for three to start. And then this didn't just start tonight. Odom took the ball hard to the basket in the second half of game three. Even though he didn't finish him, he got more aggressive. Perkins backs in, takes his time, and dumps it in. That's his strength against Odom, who can't match up with the brute strength of Perkins. But I like what Odom is doing, catching the ball where he was tentative in the past. Right now, he is catching it, ready to make a quick, precise move. He's been in foul trouble, Odom has, every game in the series. He's had five fouls in each of the first three, so he's had absolutely no rhythm. Kobe Bryant, a couple of jab fakes. Gasol, ball tip, last touch by Pierce. Lakers with a new possession. Great one-on-one -on -one defense by Ray Allen against the best player in the world. Forced Bryant to give it up, pass was off target. Took the Saul out of his shooting rhythm. Allen and Pierce, two great offensive players who've gotten some nice kudos for their defense this year. As Kevin Garnett and the Celtics have turned around their defensive mindset. Odom, again aggressive. Radmanovic, open three. That's good. Eight point lead. And it's the skill level of Lamar Odom. Put so much pressure on your defense. Catches the ball, he can knock down the jump shot, so you must run out at him. And two skilled, puts the ball on the floor, makes the play. Rondo's floater won't go. Garnett does a good job tipping it out. Pierce who really struggled in game through. Game three, just two of 14. Rondo wide open. Now he shoots. Rebound tip, nearly put in by Perkins. Garnett breaks it up. Allen saves it. Good job from Pierce. Pierce on the drive, Banker won't go. Lakers running, Gasol back to Odom again. Odom four for four, and a 10-point advantage for the Lakers. Celtics need a timeout. Here comes the first ovation of the night. You talk about Lamar Odom, his skill level, struggling so far in this championship series. Find a way to get it done. You are too good just to be a regular guy on the floor. I've dreamt about holding that trophy for a long time. I just would love to know what it feels like to be the last team standing someone that's been playing basketball as long as I've been. That's the peak, that's the pinnacle. He's playing in his first NBA Finals. He has struggled through the first three games shooting the basketball, but what a great start tonight in game four. It's a great start because he's so versatile. He's best when he's attacking here. He's a tremendous passer. High, low off the blitz of the pick and roll of Bryant, and then catch and drive it. No hesitation, no indecision, and then the Lakers on the break. Very, very efficient with Gasol and Odom finishing the play. Garnett misses Odom a rebound. Odom grew up in Queens, New York. This is his ninth year in the league. He's 28, his fourth year with the Lakers. Started his career in LA, but with the Clippers, and as we've always said, just such a versatile player. Bryant, jumper won't go. Odom, an excellent rebounder. 
Puts it back up, draws the foul. And that's going to be two on Garnett. For a rough start for the Boston Celtics. And Garnett's going to come out. P.J. Brown gets off the bench. And this is the thing I disagree with Phil Jackson saying that the bigs for the Celtics were too big and strong and physical for Lamar Odom eliminating his rebounding ability. This is a big-time rebounder. It was energy and effort. That's the difference to start this ball game. Big-time offensive rebound over KG. After a couple of games, Phil Jackson said that Odom looked confused. That's not easy to take even for a veteran to be called out by like, like that. Now, Jackson said, hey, Odom's okay with it. And we asked him Odom about it. He said he was okay, but he can't like that during the finals, and he's responded here. He has, and sometimes you look at Odom and you think small forward, but he's such a good rebounder. The best part of his game, when he gets a defensive rebound and then leads the break, that's the hardest thing to guard in basketball is when you have a fast break where no outlet pass is required. He's their best rebounder at 10 and a half the game in the regular season. And I love the fact that when you talk about a guy, Phil Jackson said, come here. Get upset if it's not true. When you watch the film, no question about it, he played from two. Bad pass. Here's Toronto. And a rough start for the Celtics as we go to Michelle. Guys, during the last time out, Doc Rivers told his players, they're more physical. They're going over your back again. I don't mind the missed shots. Those will take care of themselves, but it's all the other little things we gotta clean up. Relax and play, relax and play, and stop avoiding the contact, go through it. Well, he said after game three, we didn't set a pick all night as Radmanovic hits a three. Vladimir Radmanovic puts the Lakers up 20 to six. This is when the Lakers are a dangerous basketball team, clicking on all cylinders, Kobe Bryant being more facilitator and other guys playing aggressive. And the chance of defense, foul away from the ball. Fisher a little aggressive, so picks up his first. Eddie House is quickly going to come in. You look at Rob Monich, a big time shooter play made by Derek Fisher. He's ready to lock and load. Beautiful rainbow jump shot. And I love this substitution of Eddie House for Rondo. It'll keep Bryant at home more, which will give more space for Pierce and Ray Allen. Pierce lines up a three. Won't go, Perkins had it, but he got fouled. So the Celtics will get it out of bounds. It's gonna be against Odom, that's his first. And those are a lot of where Odom is fouling, around the basket as you see Rondo on the bench, but Odom is fouling on blockouts. He's fouling near the basket. He's got to try to keep Perkins off without getting himself into foul trouble. And that's what he's been unable to avoid the first several games. Celtics also need some offense with Garnett on the bench. Perkins inside. Nice speed blocked by Bryant, but a foul. OB Bryant his first, and P.J. Brown will shoot two. Log on to NBAstore.com. Lakers and Celtics finals gear. NBAstore.com. One store, every team. Crowd reacting to the uh, big screen replay as Brian picks up his first foul. <laughs> Getting the booze from the crowd. And Brown misses the first. Good job by Kobe Bryant not giving up on the play. E.J. Brown. Guess what? That's not a foul. That's a good block right there. Whoa, he, what are you talking about? That is a blatant foul. And plus, when you wind up like that, you're going to get called for a foul. But you know what set that up? Bryant wasn't in the lane because he's guarding Eddie House, which gave Perkins the ability to hit Brown in the middle of the lane. I need to know. You were kidding, right? I just want to see if you guys are paying attention. <laughs> Man, that's a backtrack right there. I put it right by the rim, and you guys went up and got it. <laughs> Turnover down the other end. Both teams a little sloppy early. Lakers have been excellent. Under 12 turnovers a game so far in these finals. House to Perkins. There's his double team. Eddie House creating his own shot. Way off, however. And Radmanovic's the rebound. Eddie House had Kobe Bryant up in the air. He should have gone right into him. Got Bryant second foul. Instead, Bryant will post up down the other end. Fisher. And again, Lakers in attack mode. Lakers from the field, 8 for 12 so far, and they lead by 15. And I think if you're Paul Pitt, you have to look to be more aggressive offensively than Ramonovic guarding. Find a way to force double teams and make play. Perkins. Can't 
get it to fall. Here come the Lakers again. Odom giving some room. Steps back. Hitting the jumper. Everything Odom puts up. Knocking it down. He's five for five. And look at this score. I said he snapped out of his slump early. Oh, he's, he's doing nothing that he didn't do when he was 15 years old. Trust your game and make a play. Eddie House misses. And the Celtics now three for 15. A nightmare start for Boston. And a timeout ball by Phil Jackson. Whatever he's going to say, he better say, keep what you're doing, guys, because they have been sensational to start. And it's been Lamar Odom. When you get your game going with a few layups, now you can shake him, take a little step back, and knock in that jumper. Odom, so versatile, so good at the outset here tonight. Technology. Welcome back to game four from the Staples Center. Lamar Odom and the Lakers near perfect to start. Odom perfect from the field. Uh, five for five. Says, look at that score for the Lakers. 24 to seven after the big struggles in the first couple of games. Just tremendous performance and not just scoring. Lakers with a chance to add to the lead. Odom again. Six for six. He said after game three he was going to watch a lot of tape to see what he was doing. Whatever he did, it's working. But that's the type of guys you want. Guys that's going to make the adjustment, not look to make excuses, but find a way to get it done. Here's to P.J. Brown. He's left open. Nothing going the Celtics way. Three for 16 and four turnovers. Not wants him to shoot it again. Gasol. Radmanovich, another open three. And Perkins the rebound. A rare miss from the Lakers here in the first quarter. Pierce trying to get on track. Nice move from Pierce, who was just 2 of 14 in game three. That's his first field goal tonight. Radmanovich, I think Perkins got a piece of it. And here comes Pierce. Makes the three, drives inside out. Ray Allen, three pointer, knocks it down. And that's what we're talking about. Pierce has to look to be aggressive. Last play made on his own. That play puts the ball on the floor and makes the play for Ray Allen. Well, the first time where the Celtics able to get back-to-back -back buckets is Brian is mauled. It's on Perkins. It will be his second. When you talk about Paul Pierce, he's too good offensively. Has the package. Gets Lamar Odom in the air. Puts the ball on the floor, a paint touch, wind up with a wide open jump shot because of his aggressiveness. And in game three, on similar plays, when he shot fake and got a defender up in the air, he just side dribbled and shot a three. Much better aggression attacking the basket. Sword Barnett on the bench. He picked up two fouls in the first six minutes. Lakers to the foul line as Boston's in the penalty. All right, Jeff, as a coach, the game starts like this with just this onslaught. Your team can do nothing right. How do you deal with it? Well, you know, it's a long game, and so you try to play one possession at a time. Right here, Doc Rivers, an interesting substitution for Perkins. He went with James Posey, the smaller man, versus Leon Poe in hopes to match up with Odom better off the dribble. Because Odom is just taking them apart. Posey, an excellent defender. Brian hearing the MVP chance. He's increased his scoring in every game so far in the finals. Knocks that one down. He had 24 in the first game, then 30, and 36 in game three. 28-12, Lakers under two minutes remaining. What has been a nightmare first quarter for Boston. Trevor Ariza harassing Pierce. Doc Rivers asking, call a foul, and there it is. Not the penalty yet. Next one. And the Celtics will inbound. 
And this is good, solid defense by Ariza. You want to force the issue against Paul Pierce, but right now, being in the penalty, you can't play this same defense. You don't want to allow a score to get going, going to the foul line. They need to get Pierce on track, especially with Garnett on the bench. Posey passes up a three. He'll take it to the basket. Nice move, can't finish, and Gasol the rebound. 12-6 on the boards in favor of the Lakers. Jordan Farmar, his first minutes. Bryant calling for it. Lots it in Gasol, and Gasol is hit by P.J. Brown. So more free throws from the Lakers. First game five will be Sunday night. Right back here at the Staples Center. The question is, will it be 2-2? Or will the Celtics mount a comeback and get a 3-1 lead? Be on the air at 8:30 Eastern. Tip off shortly after 9 Eastern. As you saw the free throw. Mike, I'm going out on a limb right now. Don't say it. I'm going 2-2. <laughs> you just said it's early in the game. It is. But you're, I'm going to take a 17-point lead anytime I can get it. You're a real, real daredevil. <laughs> I saw the second one. At least tell the people there's a chance they're going to come back. Oh, in the NBA, there's always a good opportunity to get back in every game. And <laughs> you think about it, you give me Kevin Garnett, Ray Allen, and Paul Pierce, I'll take a team's chance of making a comeback, especially in a league that's all about runs. Here's to Eddie House. House wide open. Can't hit the three. And Trevor Reza had it, lost it, the foul on Ray Allen. So Allen picks up his first, and Ariza will shoot free throws. That's the second wide open look Eddie House has had out of a double team or semi double team of Paul Pierce. If he's not going to knock that down, then they're going to have to substitute and go to somebody else, maybe Sam Cassell, because he's got to knock that in. So Ariza will go to the line. Trevor Ariza was 22 years old, his fourth year in the league. They've got two players, Ariza and Farmar. From Los Angeles, high school in L.A., both went to UCLA, and now playing for the Lakers in the NBA Finals. You talk about kids having their dreams come true, both Ariza and Farmer are that way. Ariza, as we talked about during the series, broke his foot this the last few months of the regular season, but he's healthy again and certainly helping out. Kobe Bryant. Ariza, wide open. That's a three. Puts it in, 34 to 12. But it's something else when you can trust your best player to make the right play. That penetration by Bryant, similar to what Pierce did with Allen, gets the jump of a reason. Eddie House banks went in. Two second difference on the shot clock. Kobe Bryant will take his time. The largest lead at the end of the first quarter of an NBA Finals game ever is 20 points. Hinkers have a 20 point advantage right now with a chance to increase it here. Bryant, nice feed, Gasol, and he's whacked by Posey. So Gasol will go to the line. And really, Kobe Bryant has been the difference offensively. He puts the ball on the floor almost like Steve Nash. Once he leaves the floor, he's looking to make the right play. The right play was a cross court pass to a reason in the corner all by himself. This will be the 14th and 15th free throw for the Lakers. Celtics win the penalty early as Gasol way short. Not even the Memorial Day Massacre was this lopsided at the end of the first quarter. And the Celtics have gone very small in the last possession. But I'd be concerned if I was Doc Rivers with that because they have not rebounded the ball off missed free throws. And they're very small right now in the blockout position. What a start for Odom as he goes to the bench. This one of the stars of game three, Sasha Bujacic is in. Ray Allen. That's a three at the buzzer. Won't go. It would have been a two anyway, and that ends. What's a nightmare for Boston, but a spectacular start for the Lakers. As they finish with the largest lead ever after one quarter in an NBA Finals game. Lamar Odom struggling so much in the first couple of games, averaging just over nine per game. He was six for six from the field, and the Lakers are up 21.
leading 35 to 14. Doc Rivers, they had an avalanche of scoring, very little falling for you. As a coach, where do you start? Well, you just keep playing, you know, you just keep playing through it. It's got to start on the defensive end. Michelle, we've had, we've had great shots. We've missed three layups, three or four wide open jump shots. But if they're going to score every time down, it's going to be tough for us to get into our running game. Kevin Garnett, two fouls. When do you bring him back? Right now. We're down too much. He's coming back right now. Thank you, Doc. Thanks. Mike. Boy, Michelle, avalanche was the right word there. Not only on the offensive end, just so efficient. Ten assists on the 11 field goals, but the defense very strong as well. Only six of 22 for Boston. And as we said, largest deficit at the end of one quarter in NBA Finals history. The previous mark was game six between the Lakers and the Knicks back in 1970. That was the game that Willis Reed missed before his heroics in game seven. They were down by 20 after one and wound up losing by 22 in that game. As we have a foul away from the ball. Thanks to our statistician Dave Free. Vujicic picks up a foul. But Doc Rivers says the, the right thing to Michelle. It's not about scoring. They're going to find a way to score. They have to get stops. It's too easy right now to start this ball game for the Lakers offensive. Well, we saw the Lakers in game two down by as many as 22. Storm back. Actually down by 24. And that was in the fourth quarter as Ray Allen turns it over. We've seen so often how teams get the big early leads and you just human nature, you lose your edge a little bit. Gasol trying to post up Leon Poe, who's in, and a foul on Poe. Celtics, a lot of fouls, and that's what's helped put the Lakers at the line so often. Phil Jackson, this lineup is a lineup that can get Gasol going on the block. Surrounding him with slashes and shooters, he can now take the smaller pole on the block. Luke Walton is in. Gasol the only starter out there right now. Vujicic fires away. Won't go. Trevor Ariza up and in. Trevor Ariza looks spark off the bench. Sam Cassell, his first minutes. Garnett back in, playing with two fouls. Nice drop off pass, and Poe is hit. Right now, the Lakers are the superior team when it comes to reaction to the ball. Here, Ariza, good rebound and good follow. And if you're the Celtics, what disappoints you most is you can understand this onslaught if it was Kobe Bryant just breaking you down, breaking you down being what he can be, the best player in the game. He doesn't even have a field goal yet. He's 0 for 2. He's hit three free throws. He does have four assists. Well, that's all part of the progression of the development of this Laker team. An anti-Celtic chant breaks out here. Just over a minute gone by here in the second. Lakers right now just demolishing the Celtics. Farmar, pass out, Walton wide open for three. Rebound, Ariza nearly kept it alive. Here comes Poe, and he carried it. Should have given it up. Another turnover for the Celtics. That's number six. Really love the, the energy and effort of Ariza in this ball game. There's a, a guy off the bench saying, hey, if Poe could impact this series with his energy and effort off the bench, why can't I? Certainly has had the right mentality. Walton. Farmar and the bench have been so productive all season. Struggled early in the series, but Vujicic led them in game three. Walton inside pass to Saul, knocked away. Celtics need to start hitting some shots. Ray Allen blocked by Ariza. Ahead now to Walton. It's a foot race. Walton gets it by Casol inside to Farmar. And Garnett the rebound. Excellent block from Trevor Ariza. And then he deflects it. Boy, he is playing with so much energy. And here's a guy. He's a chronic asthmatic. He's got to always monitor his breathing. 
It hasn't affected, obviously, his athletic career, but what energy he's playing with. And the crowd showing their appreciation for his energy level in this ball game, really impacting both ends of the floor. Garnett spinning, banks it in. When you think about Ariza, he was traded mid-season and he's been hurt, so it's hard to develop any rhythm and continuity. It's hard to get in the rotation on such a good team after dealing with an injury. Acquired from Orlando back at the end of November, early in the year. Shot clock winding down. Walt spots up. Three pointer won't go. Pull the rebound. Garnett said he wanted to post up more here in game four, and does so there. But by getting a stop, it forces Luke Walton to match up on Kevin Garnett. You give him the ball on the block, and he makes a big time move. It starts on the defensive end for himself. Bujicic, the quick release. Ray Allen got a piece of it. But saved by who else? Trevor Ariza. Bujicic to Walton again. He's open. This time he knocks down the three, and it's 40 to 19. Second shot opportunity. Ariza chases down the rebound and makes the play for the lake. Garnett. The Souls had to guard some tough guys during the playoffs. Tim Duncan now Garnett. Posey draws the foul. And he'll go to the line as Trevor Ariza makes a rare mistake. Former draft pick of the New York Knicks, Trevor Ariza, getting it done here for the Lakers. Finding a way to show that he belongs here. Comes in off the bench, raises the level of play, knocks down a jumper off of the ball movement of Kobe Bryant. Stellar play, enjoying himself, and then hustle plays. Offensive rebound, get in there, girl. Ariza has had an impact. That score is correct. 40 to 19. Lakers just pouring it on here to start this game as they try to even the series at two games apiece. Now let's throw it over to Michelle Tafoya with a special guest. Yeah, Mike, you, you talk about what a star studded crowd this is, and I'm with Will Smith. And what do you think of this score? What do you think of this game? Uh, that's the way I like it. I like to play from in front. <laughs> well, it's pretty well in front. Um, do, do you have a relationship with any of the Lakers that you're out here and you're making some eye contact and telling good stuff? You know, just really Kobe, you know, there's a, I've been in hibernation for the, for the past six months in, in my character, so I came back out. So Kobe is really, really the uh, the only person I have like, a, a, a personal relationship with. So. How good is it to be a fan and to have these guys back to this kind of level? Oh no, you know, this is beautiful. You know, I grew I grew up uh, in in Philadelphia. You know, so my team got beat up by the Boston Celtics a lot while I was growing up. So I'm I'm, I'm excited and and uh, hopeful that the the Lakers, now that I live out here, can you know give me that feeling back. So it was Hitch, now Hancock, and I'm guessing <laughs> hostility is next. <laughs> yeah, all H's. We're in pursuit of happiness. We're working with all the H's. Good luck on the movie. It opens July 2nd, and, and thanks for stopping by. Thank you very much. That. Mike? Thank you, Michelle. Hey, the Celtics need some Hancock-type energy right now. <laughs> they need that guy to start and then jump up to the sky. Nice transition. Now, Hitch was a great movie. Kevin James, if there's anyone funnier than Kevin James, I want names. <laughs> these superlatives that you put on these average movies. What are you? No, Hitch was an outstanding move. Odom inside, Odom again. He's seven for seven. And it's 42-21. Talk about a turnaround. And speaking with Odom yesterday, again, he tried to remain calm and he kept saying, as long as we win, so he was happy with game three. Well, he kept saying it's not about L.O., which is his nickname, it's about L.A. Kobe Bryant will rebound. Again, Bryant doesn't have a field goal, and they're up by 21. Who would have thunk that? Barmard to the basket. Takes his time, misses the banker. Turiak goes down hard, but he's okay. Yeah, 
Kevin Garnett trying to get on track, as is Paul Pierce and the Celtics. They have been dominated so far here in game four. Another turnover, and Cassell with a foul. There won't be a clear path foul. Ray Allen was ahead of the play, so the Lakers will take it out of bounds. You see what Lamar Odom is doing, staying aggressive. Good job of passing the ball on the floor, sets a screen, and then no one's guarding him. Recognition gets the basketball and puts it in. I just got a feeling my guy here has another rule change. No, no rule change. Not yet, at least. About the fast break, I'm sure you wanted to say something about stopping the ball in transition. With that no, last I actually ball. thought that was a good one. I, I don't like the one where it barely is controlled when the shot clock goes off if they stop the play. It should be a play on as long as they maintain control. Vujicic plays on 20 points in game three, and he gives the Lakers a 24-point lead here in the second. I, I don't... I, right now, play through Kevin Garnett, post him up, and then when they double, get to proper spacing and be ready to shoot. Oh, inside. Misses. Turiaf tips it. Doc Rivers screaming at Tom Washington. That's a foul, he's saying. As we approach the midway point with what so far has been a good old-fashioned blowout. And a foul away from the ball. It's going to go against Sam Cassell. Celtics their third team foul. Paul Pierce will return. There's just one for four, only two points. Which has been more of a struggle for Boston, offense or defense? Unfortunately, you can't pinpoint it. It's both. They're, they're either not getting quality shots or they're missing. And then down here, no defensive mentality to make it hard on the Lakers. And to me, it's defense, even though they're struggling offensively. But this is a team that's won 66 ball games, and they're here because of what they, they've done on the defensive end. Here comes Farmar. Pull up jumper, that's a two. And long rebound to Posey. Lakers for the second straight game jumped out early. Nothing like this, though, is the cell, not even close. Well, the point guard play at Boston has been way below average. They're wide open, they're doubling off of them, and they're just missing. They have one assist as Brian is called for an offensive foul. And we'll have a timeout. The Lakers so impressive at home. They have not lost in the playoffs here at the Staples Center. 9-0. 15 straight wins dating back to the regular season. Have not lost on this floor since March. And they're up by 24. Bryant's numbers, 0 for 2, no field goals, 3 points. If you're just tuning in, you're wondering what the score is. And despite that, the Lakers up by 24, 45-21. He has the 6 assists, but everybody getting it done for the Lakers. Well, because he attracts so much attention here. They double Bryant every time in the low post. Boston small, nice little pass to Gasol, gets him to the free throw line. Gets over the top of the pick and roll. Pierce rotates to Gasol. Very few players can throw this diagonal skip pass on the money right to Ariza's shooting pocket and he knocks it in. Here, another double team with a low post. Bryant under Poe's arm. Lamar Odom with a great finish and then even contributing on the bench. Luke Walton hits a three and gives him a little love tap. Meanwhile, Posey, he misses a three. Bryant the rebound. Boston now 28% from the field. Bryant finding Vujicic, another open look. Not that time, and Odom the rebound. Under five to play in the second. Just a dominant performance. Kobe Bryant. Redmanovic tips it, but right to Ray Allen. The crowd has even they've gotten tired of cheering and giving standing ovations, says Kevin Garnett knocks down the shot. Every time the Celtics get the ball to Kevin Garnett on the low post, something good happens. It's not about scoring. They get a good look. Bryant with Pierce on him. Back out. Radmanovic has already hit a couple of threes off that time. And Garnett the rebound. Rondo back in. Ray Allen. That's a good look. And Celtics get it to go down. Allen who's been so hot. 
shooting well again. Three for six. He has eight to lead Boston. And Phil Jackson quickly wants to call timeout. His team has been up by as many as 24. They've led the entire game. And doesn't want to give the Celtics any confidence as we wind down the second. Good timeout by Phil Jackson. You don't want to have breakdowns. Ray Allen, one of the best shooters in basketball, gets a wide open look in transition. That's why you were down 2-0. Got to get it done. ABC, the biggest high stakes adventure of the summer continues. Daredevil stunts, break taking challenges, and thrill seeking mystery that will keep you guessing. Who is the mole? Monday at 10, 9 central on ABC. Here at the Staples Center, it has been all Lakers 45 26. They have led right from the start. Lamar Odom has been superb. Just a great performance for this team. And and you see the way they play at home. It's much like the Celtics, just so much more aggressive right from the start, Mark. Well, there's a reason why they're winning. Aggressive on both ends of the floor. The role players came out ready to play, getting it done defensively. And then the play of Lamar Odom has been stuck. Bryant. He was looking to pass it first. And this is that shot. He's still without a field goal, but obviously hasn't affected the Celtics. Posey hit hard as he gets knocked to the ground. You know, we've seen in this series, game two, Leon Poe had the 21-point game. He was an unlikely hero. Game three, it was Sasa Vujicic. He had 20, an unlikely hero. And how about the likes of Trevor Ariza tonight? Only six points, but his energy, a really big part of this lead stretching. And although Bryant without the field goal, he has had plenty of help. And that's what's one of the fun things about, it seems, every finals. There's one or two guys. And you can't expect them to have, you know, a whole series worth of huge games. But Vujicic helped the Lakers win one game. Same thing with Poe. It's, it's such a huge boost for a team to get that, that kind of contribution. And you never know who it's going to be. All your job is to do when you're a role player is to be ready for your moment. And those guys took care of business when their moment presented itself. I can't believe I'm saying this, but the Celtics have cut it to 17. <laughs> I didn't think I'd be saying that. Here in the second quarter. They've scored seven straight. The Saul misses and Pierce the rebound. Boy, if they could in the last three and a half minutes of this quarter, eat more into this lead. Nice pass. Rondo not looking to shoot. Out to Posey for three. That's good. And it's a 14-point game. They've sliced 10 points off very quickly. And a bad play by Lamar Odom defensively, looking to help off of Rondo, stay at home on the shooters, leaving Posey wide open. And again, it started with posting up Kevin Garnett. Bad pass and a turnover. Lakers have turned it over eight times as we go to Michelle. Well, Doc Rivers was saying to his team in that last huddle, let's just get it to 10. It ain't going to be easy, but let's get it to 10. I know you're thinking about the next home game. Focus on getting it to 10. They've got it to 12, Michelle. 45-33 on a 12-0 run. And the Staples Center getting very quiet. Pierce on Bryant. Doesn't go for the fake. Nice defense. Odom. Fisher on the drive. Count it and one. Three point opportunity for Derek Fisher. Just like Kevin Garnett on the other end, when you get the ball in the post, the defense collapsed. Odom, not forcing anything, puts the ball on the floor to Derek Fisher, not settling from the perimeter, gets into the paint, gets the basket and the foul. Celtics trying to turn it around. Doc Rivers letting his team know, hey, it's still very early, despite the fact we're getting dismantled. Early on in the game. So we got to fight on the floor. And we got to relax and play. One bucket at a time, all right? No reason to press, okay? Hey, we're right there, but we got to make play. His voice is changing. You know, you say it's early, but it gets late early. <laughs> Thanks, Yogi. <laughs> no, seriously. You, you know, this whole idea that you ease yourself into game, this is a first quarter lead. And when you're ready, you, you play from ahead and you play with a cushion, you can withstand that 12-0 run. But when you come out and you try to 
ease into the game and then you try to fight back. Very rarely do you get all the way back and get over the hump. There are great comebacks, but you're right. It doesn't always happen with a team crawls all the way back. Sometimes they make a game of it, but it takes its toll crawling all the way back. Back to 15. Fisher, an important bucket there to at least stop the momentum a bit. Rondo. Allen for three. Now, way short. Not a good shot. And if you're Rondo, you have to recognize how you're being defended. Put the ball on the floor and think score first. Right now, he's putting it on the floor and think, where's the guy going to be open? Odom to Gasol. Gasol the finish. And just like that, the lead back to 17. But they're so small. The Celtics have downsized to play more quickness. But when Garnett helps on the pick and roll, there's no shot blocking at the basket. Under two minutes remaining. Kevin Garnett screaming, or excuse me, Doc Rivers screaming on the defense of three seconds. And he got the call, so the technical foul is on Kobe Bryant. Again, pick and roll. Garnett, the only seven-footer out there, so as Gasol rolls and Odom hits him high low. There's no shot blocking at the basket. And defensively, you have to realize when Kobe Bryant's coming off the score and when he's looking to set you up defensively to make the play high low to Odom. The technical free throw is good coming up at half. Stuart Scott, John Barry, Michael Wilbon, and James Worthy will be there for the T-Mobile halftime report. We'll analyze the first half. And an interesting story about Phil Jackson and his NBA journey. I got his journey down pat. Win every year. <laughs> Posey for three. That's good. James Posey knocks it down. And it's a 13-point game. They cut it to 12 moments ago before the Lakers went on a mini run. Posey, 10 points here in the second quarter. A nice and needed boost offensively for Boston. Odom, the Radmanovich, blocked by Garnett. Boy, that was very close to being a goaltend. Posey back out to Rondo. Ray Allen for three. And Gasol the rebound. Coming up on a minute remaining. Fisher drives right at Posey in a blocking foul. Three fouls on Posey. And Fisher who struggled shooting in game three. He'll get a couple of free throws. Doc Rivers, a point guard himself throughout his career in the NBA, trying to teach his young point guard. And I love when Fisher puts the ball on the floor like he's doing tonight. Very good three-point shooter, but when he attacks off long closeouts, when he attacks off the pick and roll, it adds another dimension, another penetrator to the Laker lineup besides Bryant. Fisher trying to win his fourth NBA ring. Of course, we know Kobe Bryant was part of that Laker team that won three in a row along with Shaquille O'Neal. But Fisher was the third leading scorer on those teams. And always coming up big in the playoffs. He's had great NBA finals. And he puts the Lakers back up by 15. Pierce inside, and he's fouled. Well, if that's on Bryant, and I think it is, that would be his third. As Pierce will go to the line, Bryant wanted to charge. So three fouls on Kobe Bryant. But you see what Paul Pierce is doing. One time makes a play for somebody else. This time isolation situation. Beats Kobe Bryant to the spot before the help comes. Creates the contact and goes to the line. This is what the Celtics need offensively from Pierce. And in the restricted area there. Pierce's first free throw. Vujicic comes in as Bryant will sit the final 52 seconds with the three personals. So Posey with three and Bryant with three, the only players in any kind of foul difficulty here in the first half. P.J. Brown's going to come in to make sure Kevin Garnett doesn't pick up his third. Garnett has two. Is you know the type of thing, Jeff, where... Your assistants and somebody on the bench lets you know, hey, Barnett has two. We don't want him to pick up the third. Is that the type of thing you get on the bench? Right. Usually the trainer in the NBA actually tells you about fouls. But in this situation, down 14 or 13, depending on this free throw, 
I would have left Garnett in the game to try to finish this quarter with my best offensive and defensive lineup. Final minute, you know, what was looked like it was going to be a blowout win for the Lakers, but the Celtics have themselves back in it, and the Lakers turn it over again. That's their ninth. Pierce makes his move, tough shot, and Odom tips the rebound to himself. But there's Smart. no spacing on the floor when Pierce drives it because you have Brown in the game, Perkins in the game, and Rondo in the game. And a small play by Odom on the rebound, not looking to push it, being patient offensively. Five second difference between the shot clock and game clock. The soul inside draws the foul, count it, and one. Pau Gasol with a chance for a three-point play. And it's set up by the aggressiveness of Derek Fisher. You talk about him not settling from the perimeter, looks to put the ball on the floor, splits the pick and roll. Nice drop pass to Gasol in rhythm where he can finish and take the contact. Perkins picks up his third foul. Lakers have 15 assists in the first half. Excellent ball movement and excellent balance. It's important that Pierce and Posey really block out. They both have length issues on this miss. The solo negates that with an eighth free throw. Final seconds, first half. And Radmanovich just runs over Rondo. And the Lakers in the penalty, so Rondo will shoot two. Jackson's team got off to that great start. Devin Garnett and the Celtics back on their heels. None of them busting out. But what looked like it was going to be a blowout, at least they slice some off the lead. Give them some thought as they go into the locker room, and Rondo misses a free throw. The other Celtics, the concern right now with 5.2 seconds to go. If the Lakers get the basketball, that's plenty of time to get a good look, and that's why Jackson inserts Jordan Farmer into the ballgame. Rondo again sprained the ankle, started the game, was ineffective. I think more of his ineffective play than the ankle problem took him out. Goes one of two from the line. Plenty of time to get off the shot. Lakers trying to make it difficult on Farmar. Farmar at the buzzer, banks it in! Count the basket! It's a two-pointer. And the Lakers finish in style from Jordan Farmar. The officials have to review it. As the basket was scored with 0 0 0 on the clock, but it looked like no question Farmar's two pointer left his hand before the buzzer. Oh, wait a minute. Should he was in a three. He was beyond the three point mark, and they'll look at that, and it's a three. They change it. So good job by the officials in checking it. And Farmar with a three pointer initially ruled a two as the Lakers lead back up to 17. Let's go to Michelle. Thank you with Lamar Odom. What a night. What a start for you. Why is tonight going so much better than the first three games for you? Focus um, on the court. No foul trouble. Um, it's allowing me to stay on the court and make plays and you know, I just just blocked it all out and just try to prepare myself for the moment, which is tonight. To be out there and to be scoring in waves like this against this team, what does it feel like for you guys? Well, I mean, for me personally, it was a little embarrassing because they've been leaving me the whole series and I haven't been making them pay. Um, but it's, it's a tribute to our defense whenever we score the ball like this. Thanks, Lamar. No problem. Mike? Well, Michelle, he said it's hard to help from the bench. He spent a lot of time on the bench in foul problems. Not the case here in the first half tonight. T-Mobile halftime report coming up with Stuart John, Michael Wilbon, and special guest James Worthy. And look at the first half and take a little journey with Phil Jackson. All coming up on the T-Mobile Halftime report. Lakers trying to even up this NBA Finals at two games apiece. Came out like gangbusters. Went up by as many as 24. Celtics came back, cut it to 12 at one point, but there's still some frustration. Halftime here at game four. Lakers by 18. Defensively, defensively, we start making plays, the scoring will come. But we have to make 
place. You got to go out and win this third quarter. You go out to win the third quarter. Well, Phil Jackson's Lakers certainly won the first half, especially the first quarter. They're in game four of the NBA Finals. Lakers trying to even things up at two apiece right now. They've got an 18 point lead as we get set to start. Quarter number three. And hello again, everyone. Just a tremendous performance from the Lakers right from the start, Jeff. I mean, you look about offensive efficiency, it's just tremendous. Well, and one of the reasons is that they can pass with all, with all five players. Their bigs pass as well as their perimeter players, and you saw that on display in the first half. And this is our Coors Light Cool Tracks. And here's a great example. You got Lamar Odom leading the break. He touches it to Gasol, who touches it right back to Odom. And again, you're going to see Biggs passing to Biggs. Brian off the pick and roll, finds Odom at the free throw line area. Good touch pass to Gasol. Great player tracker action. And then again, Odom to Gasol off the pick and roll of Bryant. Tremendous big to big passing for the Lakers. And they rack up 58 points. In game three, even in the win, they only had 87. Good balance, open three pointers. Even some second chance opportunities as they out rebounded the Celtics by 10 in that first half. All right, for the Celtics, Mark, what has to be the key, key thing to turn around here in the second half? Well, Doc Rivers touched on it during the Wyatt. It starts on the defensive end. They have to find ways to get stops, and that good defense will create good offense. And the third quarter has belonged to the Celtics so far in this series. You saw those numbers. And the Celtics certainly need a big third quarter here to get back in the game. They were down by as many as 24. Have never led in this one. As Pierce quickly draws a foul. And we'll send it to Michelle. Well, you guys heard Doc Rivers telling his team, we've got to make plays. And he told me coming out of the locker room, specifically on loose balls, he feels the Lakers are making more plays on things like loose balls, the little things, than they are. I asked him if this is such a high hurdle that they have to expend so much energy to get over it that almost seems impossible. And he said, we've got two days off after this. There's plenty of time to rest later, Mike. Well, that idea of loose balls and hustle plays, he felt the same thing after game three. And as Pierce knocks down the first free throw. And what you don't want to do as a Celtic player right now is think that you're going, to, you're going to take over the game on the offensive end. It's not about that. It's about taking over the game defensively. But having been there as a coach, sometimes you don't tell the whole truth when you're asked by a reporter. If you were telling the whole truth, you say, we have gotten as poor a point guard play as you could have in a final. And they are totally, I have never seen a team totally neglect one player like they are neglecting Rondo with Kobe Bryant. If you don't tell the truth, I think you should apologize to Mark the line to him right now. <laughs> you tell the truth as an announcer, but you can't always tell the truth. Garnett. As a coach. Garnett trying to get himself on track. Knocks that one down. Kevin Garnett with his fourth field goal, and it's 14. Oh, the other Lakers, you don't, you don't mind that shot. You're keeping Garnett at the top of the key. You have to make a tough, contested jump shot. You don't mind that. That's good defense. Bryant and Pierce. Kobe Bryant puts it in. That's his first field goal. And, Mike, I don't want to go back to the Celtics point guard play. It wasn't just Rondo. Eddie House came in there, missed wide open shots. Cassell, the same thing. And I like what Rondo's doing right there. Make him play you. You cannot be ignored. And if he has to shoot four, five, six, seven straight times, so be it. And you send him the message. By being unselfish, you're hurting your basketball team. They're daring you to be a scorer. You have to make them pay the price. Gasol left open. Rondo gets a hand up. And Garnett the rebound. Even Jeff, even if he misses several in a row. Again, he drives, finds Perkins. And the ball knocked out of bounds. Still Celtic ball. Just like here, they're running a little screen and roll. Just by it driving to score is so critical. Too often, Rondo drives to pass. And when you're playing against a team seven straight times, they start to notice tendencies. So he's got to think score first on his penetration. Again, Kobe Bryant, who has been guarding in the last couple of games, and as Jeff mentioned, backing off him. Garnett, wide open shot, short. Ray Allen, the offensive rebound. Boards have belonged to the Lakers so far tonight. Pierce to Garnett. 
Garnett drives on Gasol, stops it, backs it in, and it's a 12-point game. Celtics slowly chipping away. Uh, Kevin Garnett puts so much pressure on your defense when he catches the ball on the block. Has the skills to take a turnaround jump shot and also put the ball on the floor. Fisher to Bryant. Back out, Odom. He's not a three-point shooter. Drives to the basket, draws the foul. And Perkins is hurt. He's holding his left shoulder. Perkins quickly walks over to the Celtic bench. That's four on Perkins, but this right now, the injury more important, Eddie Lassert. He had athletic trainer attending to him. He's in some pain. He's a tough kid, too. There's Brian McKean, the doctor. And right away, he grabbed it. He's going back to the locker room. See, Doc Rivers realized immediately when he walked over to Perkins, began to walk away upset that his big guy had to go in the back. Think about it. How often have you seen this number of players in one series get hurt? Pierce, Rondo, Perkins, and now second Perkins. injury. He had that ankle injury earlier, and now the, the shoulder. So Odom having just a fabulous game. Not just the 16 points, he's got eight rebounds as well. And Perkins in a lot of pain. Young man had some terrific games here in the postseason as one of the support players behind the big three. Pierce, DJ Brown left open. Can't get it to go. Garnett can't control the board. The Soul's done a better job on the board, too. Radmanovic lays it in. You just look at the skill level of Lamar Odom and what he can do on the floor. Catches it on the run. The beautiful touch pass back to Radmanovic. He's got 17 points, eight rebounds, and four assists. That's Lamar Odom. Garnett misses. Garnett said, and the entire Celtic team felt they settled for too many jumpers in game three. You guys talked about it over and over again. Just good things happen when he posts up. Well, if I'm a coach against the Celtics, I understand Kevin Garnett is a superior player. If he's going to beat me, it's going to have to be from the perimeter. Kobe Bryant fires away. That's good. Hand in his face, and the lead is back to 18. A very interesting switch, putting Pierce on Bryant to start the second half. I thought Ray Allen had done a very good job against Kobe Bryant. Garnett throws it out of bounds. Some miscommunication as the Celtics turn it over for the 10th time. Well, this is just very good defense by Pierce. Better offense, jab step jumper, good contest by Pierce. And you see what Doc Rivers decided to do. Takes P.J. Brown out of the ball game, brings in James Posey, so he's going small across the board. The small lineup has worked on several occasions throughout the playoffs. But it's also a lineup born out of desperation, too. This is not how they normally play, but when you're down 18, what you're trying to do is capture some energy, stretch the floor with more three-point shooting, hopefully have more speed for some transition opportunities. Here's some Bryant. Odom shuffled his feet and nearly throws it away. Radmanovic tries to save it, and it goes out of bounds. Celtic ball. Celtics need Paul Pierce. He's just two of six from the field. Of course, it's been a homecoming for Pierce. Went to Inglewood High School, which is right by the old L.A. Forum. Grew up a big Laker fan. We talked about it. Hated the Celtics as a kid. Struggling game three here in his hometown. And struggling tonight as well. Rondo. Posey, that's a three. Short. And Gasol, his eighth board. Just over four minutes gone by here in the third. Lakers have led the entire game by a comfortable margin. Radmanovic. Shot clock at seven. Bryant lifts up. Odom tips the rebound to himself. Hooked away by Rondo. 
Odom trying to post up Ray Allen, a mismatch there. Kobe Bryant finding Gasol. Fisher, nice fake, two-pointer. Lead is back to 20. Timeout, Celtics. Once again, the Lakers answer back after a mini Celtic run. L.A. with eight straight points again. Well, Lakers, the best offensive team in the NBA. Gasol on a touch pass to Fisher. Great shot fake by Fisher. Knocks in the jumper. And the great facilitator, Kobe Bryant. <laughs> Lakers up 20. This again, packed with celebrities. David Beckham, basketball royalty with Kareem. He was introduced before the game. Diane Cannon, of course, longtime season ticket holder for so many of Magic's games. Recently retired champ Floyd Mayweather Jr. Flea, I'm told, from the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Of course, we heard from Will Smith and his wife sitting courtside. And, of course, NBA fan Jack Nicholson. You know, the uh, report is Pierce drives down, banks it in. A report today's LA Times said on StubHub, there were courtside seats being sold for $22,000 each, two of them. $22,000. That means the Smiths had to pay forty-four grand to come tonight to well, Will Smith? We don't know if they're the ones who bought those. Did it take you that long to figure out $22,000 plus $22,000? I was caught. <laughs> Alice the rebound. Just like a hesitation dribble gives you time to make a decision, so too in math. Garnett takes it back out. Ray Allen. Allen finding an open James Posey for three. In and out. That one halfway down before the soul with his ninth rebound. But again, with Eddie House on the floor, they're going to be able to spread the floor more than with Rondo on the floor. Nice give and go. Radmanovic got hit. Shot won't go, but he'll go to the line. And this is what makes the Lakers so dangerous on the offensive end. Everybody can catch, everybody can make a play, and most importantly, everybody can pass the basketball. You pass the ball on the block, good things happen. Shot crisp, cut to the hoop. The handoff from Gasol to Radmanovic, that's just solid basketball, tough to defend. Vladimir Radmanovic to the line. This is his seventh year in the league. Lakers are his third team. Started out with Seattle, played with the Clippers. Young man who grew up in Yugoslavia, war-torn country during his childhood, and had a rough childhood. And now here in the NBA, and at times can be an explosive player. He's the one, though, that Phil Jackson has a couple of names for him, including the Space Cadet, he's called him. Tends to get out there sometime. I remember watching him in a world championship game years ago playing for Yugoslavia. His coach got into an argument with him at halftime, kicked him off the team, and he sat in the stands in his uniform for the second half. Pierce to the basket, banks it in, and 70 to 52. You know, that happened to me in high school. This kid, Buddy Lester, Rockwood High School, he just took off at halftime and went and sat in the stand. It was so weird. What I can just imagine in a, in a game like that. Were you coaching or were you a teammate? Brad no, Bobby? I was a teammate. He wasn't getting time or touches. Hey, it happens at every level. How about he does that and then you give Buddy Lester a shout out? <laughs> Eddie House for three. That's good. So five quick points by the Celtics. It's back to 15. Let's see, that's how you're going to create better shots. But they need Rondo strengths. You know, the Celtics would be great if they could play house at the offensive end and Rondo at the defensive end, like Iowa girls basketball. <laughs> Ryan has it as we come up on five minutes remaining here in the third. Pierce guarding in. Turn around. Shot. Lock. Pierce. Excellent defensive play. And then the outlet. Here comes Ray Allen up for the layup and a hard foul from Fisher. Hard but clean. And Allen will shoot two. I really like the way that Paul Pierce has come out to play. Offensively looking to put the ball on the floor, be aggressive, and then defensively. Guarding Kobe Bryant help doesn't come. Forces him to spin baseline, contest, and then the outlet pass. Putting Ray Allen in position for transition. Gets fouled. And I mentioned earlier why the change. Maybe that's why the change was made, so they didn't have to double Kobe Bryant in the post like they do when Ray Allen's guarding him. And if that's the case, being able to stay at home more and make him a jump shooter in the post, that's a good switch by Doc Rivers. Meanwhile, he's still without Kendrick Perkins. Let's get an update from Michelle. 
Well, and outside the Celtics locker room, Mike, and uh, Kendra Perkins is still inside. He may return to this game. He's got a left shoulder strain. That's what they're calling it right now, but he's undergoing some further evaluation by team doctor Brian McKeon. They say he may return, so we'll uh, keep an eye on it, Mike. All right, Michelle, thank you. Seven straight points, though, for Boston right now. Every time they get to within 12 or 13, Lakers go on another run. Good aggressive defense that time, almost a steal. Bryant alley up to Gasol. A broken play turns into a dunk for the Lakers. Outstanding read by Kobe Bryant, recognizing he had enough time, went up to shoot, and found Gasol. Seventh assist of the game for Kobe Bryant. He has as many assists as points. Garnett doubled. Posey wide open for three. Won't go. From three point range, they're five for 18. But those are good looks. They're just going to have to make them. Lamar Odom lost it out of bounds. They say last touch by Posey. I think if you're Lamar Odom, you have to recognize there's four smalls on the floor for the Celtics. You're being defended by James Posey. Find a way to get into the paint and make plays towards the basket. Posey pokes it away. Thirteen on the shot clock as the inbound. Odom and a travel. What do they call? No, oh, they call a foul first on Posey. He tried to do that. Lift the chair out from underneath. That defensive play we've seen. Instead, it's his fourth foul. Doc Rivers didn't like the call. Sometimes though, when guys try and do it, they grab the jersey. There. I think prior to the catch, grabbed the jersey, but that looked like a clean defensive play by Posey. Odom picks it out. Fisher for three. A rainbow shot won't go. And Ray Allen the rebound. Allen looking for an opening. Eddie House, nice feed to Posey. And the layup. Pretty pass from Eddie House, and it's back to 13 again. Crowd trying to get fired up again. This place was rocking early as the Lakers went up by as many as 24 points. Celtics have tried to chip away. Gasol, bank shot in and out. Rabanovich with a rebound. Fisher inside, poked away and stolen. Dangerous pass. Ray Allen to the basket and banks it in. And it's 11. This is the closest they've been since the opening minutes. And Phil Jackson calls timeout. Celtics right back in this game with 2.58 remaining in the third. Well, right now, the Lakers has a size and strength advantage, but the Celtics are scrapping, digging out loose balls. Here, two on one break. Ray Allen to the rim. That's got to be a foul by Rodmanovic. Very good early start to this third quarter by the Celtics. Welcome back to Los Angeles here at the Staples Center. Game four of the NBA Finals. Celtics lead it two games to one. Well, boy, do they came out with a flourish here to start. 35-14 after one. Of course, game one, Paul Pierce was terrific after coming back from the knee injury. He had 22 points. Celtics took the opener. Pierce was magnificent again in game two. Got some help from Leon Poe. And Boston held serve for the first two games at the New Garden. And Kobe Bryant with a 36-point performance. Got some help from Sasha Vujicic, and the Lakers get on the board in the finals. Here in game four, they've led by as many as 24 points in the first half. The Celtics now have cut it to 11. Closest they've been since about midway through the first. Bryant the runner, shot won't go, rebound fought for, and taken by Garnett, as the Celtics slowly have chipped away at the lead. Eddie House out there. The lone bench player, actually Posey as well, with the big three, Pierce, Garnett, and Allen. And an offensive foul is called on Garnett, a moving screen. 
It's his third. You talk about the end of the last game when Vujicic made the point that Garnett had a bunch of illegal screens. Obviously, the back screen does not allow Ariza to run to defend. Offensive foul by KG. Trevor Ariza getting some big minutes and performing very well. Another one of those unlikely players coming up big in an NBA Finals game. Gasol backs in. Nice fake. Stripped by Posey, but a whistle and a foul. Is it Posey or Garnett? It's Posey, and that's a break for the Celtics. Although Posey has five, maybe not such a break. It would have been Garnett's fourth. You see the chess match being played by both coaches. Phil Jackson decides to go small, puts in Trevor Reese, so he now has four perimeter guys on the floor along with one big. Uh, Gasol knocks down the first. He's having a better game, 13 points and nine rebounds. Meanwhile, checking in for the first time is Tony Allen. Doc Rivers deciding to go with Allen. Allen hasn't played at all in the finals. He hurt his Achilles at practice playing one-on-one -on -one during the Eastern Conference Finals. Hasn't played the last five games. Hasn't played a heck of a lot at all in the postseason. He's like their third string point guard. And Back up two guard as well. And he's the guy that really won the game here in L.A. in the regular season uh, when the Celtics were shorthanded, came up big, really playing the point guard position then. Pierce to the basket. Lots of contact counting and a foul. What a move from Pierce and a chance for a three-point play as the lead is cut to ten. Everything good happens when you get the ball into the paint. Here, Ariza just bodying up. Good rip-through move by Pierce. Great use of his strength and the ability to go up on one side, finish on the other to protect the ball versus shot blockers. Tremendous finish by Pierce. And bad defense by Ariza. The help was towards the middle of the floor. No one was at home on the weak side. Allowed him to go baseline uncontested. Pierce, eight of his 14 have come here in the third. And for the first time since very early in this game, in the opening minutes, the Celtics have it to single digits. A 14-3 run, and it's a nine-point game with still a whole quarter to play. Gasol poked away. Ariza has it. He's tied up. Bryant to Gasol. Nice pass. Gasol can't finish. And Tony Allen the rebound. Garnett fouled by Gasol. Lakers not in the penalty yet. Two on foul Gasol. Give Kevin Garnett a lot of credit, not quitting on the play. The touch pass by Bryant to Gasol doesn't allow him the easy one, but if you're Gasol, that, that has to be at the rim. That's a basket and a foul. You're too big and too skilled to get that shot blocked. Celtics trying to do something that the Lakers did, although they didn't win it in game two. Remember that game in Boston? Celtics were up by 24 with seven and a half to play in the fourth. Lakers had that huge run, cut it to two. They came up short. Meanwhile, it's the Celtics tonight who were down by as many as 24. Garnett, the extra pass, house for three, puts it in. And it's 73 67, a six point game. Good ball movement starts with the penetration. Mistake by Jordan Farmer. You cannot leave a shooter wide open. That's not your responsibility to help. And still over a minute to play here in the third. A 17-3 run for the Boston Celtics. Kobe Bryant fires away. Rebound tipped and taken by Ray Allen. Wojcic with his harassing defense. Final minute of what has been, again, another strong third quarter for the Boston Celtics. Every game in the series, they've won the third. Ray Allen to the basket, and he's foul on the pass, but he'll shoot free throws as the Lakers in the penalty. Not to belabor the point, but when you put five guys who can shoot on the floor, everyone's got more opportunities. There, as Mark said, a mistake by Farmar starting to rotate up with left house open but it's because House can spread the floor to the three-point line. That's what opens up passing angles. 
We see the third quarter score tonight. Paul Pierce has been a part of that. Ray Allen as well. Allen has had a terrific series. Hits that free throw. Ray Allen averaging a team leading 20 points per game, shooting 51% in the series. Those are his numbers tonight. But after that shooting slump earlier in the playoffs, he's been tremendous. Well, he's been spectacular on both ends of the floor. Really has been consistent and steady. And this crowd absolutely stunned as the Celtics have climbed back from 24 down on the first half, from 20 down here on the third, to a four-point deficit. Bryant looks up at a shot clock, fixes his sleeve. Vujicic, Barmar, shot clock to three, has to throw it up. Air ball, Ray Allen the rebound. And the Celtics will hold it for the final shot of the third quarter. If I'm Ray Allen, I'm going to use Vujicic's aggressiveness against him and try to get another foul call. Final second, P.J. Brown dunks it with 1.7 remaining, and it's a two-point game. Vujicic, that'll count if it goes. Not a bad attempt, but off the mark. And the Celtics on a 21-3 run, climb back to within two. An unbelievable turnaround on the road for the Boston Celtics as they outscore them 31 to 15 here in the quarter. Celtics trying to take a 3-1 lead in this best of seven series. Lakers trying to even things up. Two point game as we head to the fourth quarter of game four of the finals. We gotta compete if we wanna win. We can't pout and moat. We got to compete. All right, let's go. Do you believe? Hey, All right, let's keep go. Keep fighting. Never stop believing, baby. Back in Los Angeles, a huge third quarter run by the Celtics, and that leaves the Lakers up by two. How did Boston get back in this thing? I don't know. How'd they do it? You're supposed to know, not me. Well, momentum's a strange girl. She really jumped on the other side of the ship. And, you know, we just did things down there offensively that would put us in bad situation. So they got transition game going and their half court game going. Paul Pierce, a lot of, app, a lot of effort in that half. What does momentum do now? What do you do to try to get it back on your side? It'll come back. We'll be all right. It's Thank, good Thank you, Phil. Mike? Well, he always seems poised as his team was up by 24 in the first half. Justin Timberlake trying to root them on, but Kevin Garnett and the Celtics never say die attitude. Tell you what, we know what we have in Phil Jackson, but Doc Rivers has done an outstanding job of coaching his team and not panicking, and they really have, have taken his attitude in a pro. Here's on Bryant, shot clock down to six. There's the double. Bryant lobs it in. Roni Turiak hammered by P.J. Brown, and he'll shoot two. Some important bench players out there right now for the Lakers. They've got Odom and Bryant, but then Turiaf, Farmar, and Vujicic. And Turiaf will get a chance at the line now. And we can talk about Paul Pierce looking to attack offensively in that third quarter, but I thought just as important was the job he did on Kobe Bryant defensively in that entire quarter, limiting the amount of help needed, contested, and contained the best player in the world. And because the Lakers are up by so many points, Kobe Bryant, we haven't talked so much about his lack of scoring. Your job is to keep him in front of you. Make him work. Limit the amount of help that you need. And then when it when help does come, make sure you get back attached to his body. An outstanding job by Pierce. You have Kobe Bryant vacillating between best player in the world and best player on the planet. What's the difference? <laughs> Just like to use different words. Exactly. Turiaf misses both free throws. Bryant's just two for 11 from the field. Pierce jump shot. Short. Poe trying to keep it alive. And a loose ball foul against the Lakers. Celtics will get a new 24. I think he had control of that. And it was a shooting foul. I disagree with Tom Washington here. So he calls it a loose ball foul. Either way, Celtics has a chance to score here. That's control. And that's a shot. That's two free throws. I don't know if he got full control there. Well, even Doc Rivers on the sideline upset with that call. He felt the same way that coach. Was. We'd be begging for every call coaches do. <laughs> DJ Brown back to Pierce. 
Pierce on a drive, pulls up, and offensive foul on Pierce, pushing off. That's just his first, as the Lakers will get it back. And you see the adjustment also by Phil Jackson to start this quarter. He puts Kobe Bryant back on Pierce, realizing the damage that Pierce did in that third quarter. And if I'm Doc Rivers, I'm thinking about real hard about giving, getting Kevin Garnett back into that game so we can post the ball again. Bryant, that's a two-pointer off the mark. Grigic tracks down the rebound. Just over a minute gone by here in the fourth. You're just tuning in. Lakers had a 24-point lead in the first half. Fujicic won't go that time, and Poe tracks down the rebound. They were up by 20 in the third, but the Celtics have come back within two. Ray Allen on the drive finds Eddie House for two-pointer. Too strong. Well, P.J. Brown tracks down the rebound, and he'll reset. Foul on Fujicic, over aggressive on his defense off the ball against Ray Allen. That would be his third foul and the second on the Lakers. Both guys fighting, getting up on the floor. Fujicic, veteran move. That's a scissor move. This is wrestling. <laughs> he has it right in front of Jabby, as you can see. Deion Poe wants the ball. Poe, big game. Back in Boston in game two. Backs in, jump shot, banks it in. And the Celtics have come back from 24 down to tie the game. What a turnaround for Boston here on the road. Crowd anxious now. Kobe Bryant, the runner. Short, Allen the rebound. Kobe Bryant, just 2 of 13 from the field. Allen to Brown, to Poe, inside, won't go. Tip, that misses as well, and Bujic hits the rebound. Lakers have led this entire game. Kobe Bryant up and under. Oh, what a sensational move. Just his third field goal, but it puts them back up by two. And we are watching some of the best defense on the floor so far by Pierce and Bryant competing against each other on both ends. Pierce doubled. Eddie House back to Pierce. Shot clock at five. Pierce on the drive. Tough shot in the hand in his face. He puts it in, and we're tied again. That's good D, but better offense. You're talking about two superior offensive guys finding a way to will the basketball in. One of the young Lakers out on the floor near crunch time of game four of the finals. And a blocking foul on Pierce. His second and the team's second. Two heavyweight players battling here in game four of the NBA finals. Well, Brian has struggled all night, but here in transition, Pick and roll mistake by the Celtics. Bryant, head of steam, gets all the way to the rim, and then as the shot clock is winding down, Pierce, an excellent individual offensive move. The pull-up jumper against a good contest by Bryant. And Ke Kevin Garnett said, that's nasty. <laughs>
shot won't go. And Farmar the rebound. And we're witnessing outstanding defense on both ends of the floor. That was solid D by Odom on one end, contesting and keeping Kevin Garnett in front of him, forcing him to take a tough one. Bryant looking. Two pointer. It's good. Lakers back up by two. We talk about it all the time. Nobody closes a game better than Kobe Bryant. He's been off most of the night. And that doesn't matter come fourth quarter time. Eddie House, a jump shot. And Farmar, the rebound. Seven and a half remaining. Bryant. Up and under. Short that time. And Garnett able to grab it. Boston has to keep their pace up the floor. They were going well when it was a transition game. Now settling for half court. Kevin Garnett, tough shot, knocks it down. 12 points from Garnett, and we're tied again at 77. That's a big time move by Kevin Garnett. Good contest by Suriak, but Garnett is feeling it. Suriak throws it back out. Boyacic. Suriak with the jump shot. Too strong, and Eddie House helping out on the boards. Paul Pierce after a struggle in the first half, getting it going a bit here in the second half. Garnett finds P.J. Brown. Brown puts it up. Shot won't go. Fulich hits the rebound. Celtics have had numerous opportunities to take a lead, but have come up empty every time. Odom gets it to go. Eight for ten from the field is Odom, and the Lakers back up by two. The advantage that you get when you push the ball in transition, Biggs trailing the play. Odom, good job catching the finish. Eight assists for Kobe Bryant, and a night where he's shooting four for 16 from the field. And a blocking foul on Turiaf. That's going to be the third team foul on the Lakers. Two on Turiaf. Posey comes in for P.J. Brown. Come on, offensively for the Celtics, you have Kevin Garnett use him properly. They put him on the block, his ability to have length and separate himself, a big time post up point. Well, the Celtics going with that small unit that helped them in the third quarter. Lakers counter by bringing Pau Gasol back in the game. I like the move by Doc Rivers because you can not defend P.J. Brown. You can overhelp on him. When you substitute Posey, he's a knockdown shooter, so everybody has to be accountable. Midway point, fourth quarter. You know, game four of the NBA Finals. Lakers clinging to a two-point lead. Pierce on the pull-up. Too strong. Farmar, another rebound. And Pierce hurt himself after that shot. Bryant to the basket and the jam. Pierce grimacing down the other end of the floor after he missed a shot, holding his right ankle. He says he's okay to Kevin Garnett. And now will walk off the floor. As Kobe Bryant with another big play to put the Lakers up by four. The MVP of the NBA trying to win a championship for the Lakers. The Lakers even in this series of two games apiece. You see his start in the fourth quarter. He had 13 points in the fourth quarter of game two. He had 10 points in the fourth quarter of game three. As the Lakers now lead by four. Lakers in the playoffs, 10-0 when leading heading into the final period. And they were nursing a two-point lead to start the period. Right now, lead by four. L.A. undefeated at home in this postseason, 9-0. Allen falls down, gets it to Garnett. Allen back out corner to Posey. That's a three. It's good. Posey from downtown, and it's a one-point game again. See the difference if you overhelp with Posey on the floor, you have to pay the price. A small power forward, but can stretch the floor, catches, and knock down a big jump. 81-80 Lakers with just over five minutes remaining here in the fourth. Here's trying to fight over the screen. Bryant to the basket. Bank shot off the mark. Knocked out of bounds. Last touch by Posey. The shot did not hit the rim, so there's only six left on the shot clock. Six seconds. Six seconds. 
Bryant will inbound. Six to shoot. Gasol trying to make his move on Garnett. Stops, forces it up, puts it in. Tough shot from Al Gasol. And I think it's crucial if the Celtics are going to play small, that Gasol and Odom have to dominate the paint. Garnett trying to dominate the paint, draws the foul. And he'll go to the line as Gasol picks up his third. Six seconds left on the shot clock. Bryant, the play was for him for dribble handoff. Couldn't be accomplished. Garnett, not a good individual defensive possession, but a tough shot in traffic for Pau Gasol. And thank you, Pau, for not going to the chest bump to show that you got heart. Nothing wrong with the chest bump. Garnett's first free throw is good. Text the last name of your choice for the T-Mobile player of the game to 38657 from any wireless phone or go to NBA.com slash vote. The vote online. The win will be announced at the end of tonight's game. You're just tuning in. The Celtics were getting run off the floor early. Trailed by 22 points in the first quarter. By 24 in the second. The lead was still 20 in the third. But they come back to tie it several times. But have yet to take the lead. As they try and take a 3-1 lead in the series. Lakers desperately trying to hold on. Odom looks up at the shot clock. He had a big start. Odom backs in, layup won't go. Pierce tips it. And the Celtics with possession again. Another chance to take the lead. Many in the crowd on their feet here at the Staples Center. Eddie House, quick jump shot. It's good. And the Celtics have their first lead of the game with four minutes remaining here in the fourth. And Eddie House is a knockdown shooter. Doesn't matter how many he missed, he's going to remain calm. Double figures for House with 10. Gasol knocked away by Ray Allen. A bad pass and a turnover. And the Celtics call timeout. With 3.48 remaining, and this crowd is stunned. And the Celtics have made some great adjustments in their pick and roll defense. They're softer on the screener, which is taking away those high-low passes that we saw in the first half. One of the great comebacks in Celtic history. This coverage of the U.S. Open Golf Championship continues Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern from the South Course at Torrey Pines in San Diego. Tiger Woods, Phil Mickelson, Adam Scott all playing in a group together in the afternoon. Bill Mickelson even after the first round. Tiger plus one, Scott plus two. U.S. Open Championship. And Justin Hicks and Kevin Streelman, Streelman at three under. Always some unknown players to start. Meanwhile, Eddie House, not an unknown player, but he has played a big role in this comeback. Celtics by one, 84-83. Pierce. Three-pointer for Pierce. Short, and Ray Allen with a rebound. Allen with nine rebounds in the game. And Paul Pierce wanting the basketball, realizing that Farmer was on him. Now it's a 1-4, looking to get to his spot. Allen on the drive to the basket, up and under, squeezes it in. And it's a three-point lead for the Celtics with 3.13 remaining. Boston trying to pull off one of the greatest comebacks in NBA playoff history. Three minutes left. Lakers now find themselves down by three in a game they led by as many as 24. Vujicic knocked away by Allen, gets it back. Two on the shot clock, has to put it up. Odom, the offensive rebound. Back to Vujicic. <laughs> he wanted to shoot that one. Bryan on the drive, trying to create some space. Back out, Farmar for three. Here's the rebound with two and a half remaining. Boston Celtics with a three-point lead in an incredible turnaround here on the road. Garnett, hot step in the paint and gets the bounce. They're up by five, 88-83. Timeout Lakers with 2-10 remaining. An 8-0 run. 
As the Celtics getting it done here in game four down the stretch. Ray Allen has been the Celtics consistently best player in this series. A great baseline drive up and under on his way down. Kisses it off the glass and then a mismatch late in the clock. Garnett, hard drive left, great jump stop. The high release jumper, Celtics up five. Two ten remaining fourth quarter of game four. Celtics trying to go up three to one in these NBA finals. They've overcome a 24 point first half deficit and now lead by five. Mark Jackson, what's the key to this? Well, the key is defensively the Celtics got it done. You're talking about 20, uh, 25 points in the second half. Good job of executing defense. Uh, foul down the other end. What do the Lakers have to do now, Jeff? Well, I like the move Phil Jackson made. Put in the unit that made the comeback in the fourth quarter in game two. Radmanovic at the full, uh, four spot to spread the floor to give Bryant the room that he needs that time it paid dividends. He drove it to the rim, and because they couldn't help off the four spot, he's going to the free throw line. Pierce picking up his third foul. Bryant knocks it down. Again, this would be one of the greatest comebacks in NBA playoff history. Celtics involved in the greatest. That was a game back in 2002, the Eastern Conference Finals against New Jersey. They were down 21 at home to start the fourth quarter. It was game three, came back and won it in a game they trailed by as many as 26. The biggest lead for the Lakers in this was 24. Three-point game, just under two to play. Bryant harassing Pierce. Bryant pulls back as Garnett gets it back to Pierce. Pierce on the drive, draws contact. And it's Pierce who will go to the line with 144 remaining. And the Celtics leading by three. It's a bad job defensively by Gasol. If you're going to trap the pick and roll, you cannot allow Paul Pierce to get around you. Your job is to stop the basketball here when he isos, pick and roll. You got to stop. He's zoning the area, allowing Paul Pierce to get into the seams of the defense. That's bad defense by Gasol. His fourth foul. Pierce from the line, five for five tonight. Celtics are 19 of 22, 86 percent. And a miss. Pierce has hit some clutch free throws in the playoffs. Game two of this series. In the game seven victory against Cleveland, he's knocked down some very big free throws. It shows you the luxury of Paul Pierce, too. He's the guy bringing the ball up the floor for the Celtics. Crowd trying to rattle him. And he makes one of two. It's a four point game. Celtics still have a foul to give. Both teams still with multiple timeouts. Bryant, foul by Pierce. There's the foul to give. And they're going to call it on the floor, so the Lakers will inbound. To me, the decision for the Celtics is Kobe Bryant is going to be in the middle of the floor. He's going to attack the basket. Who do you help off of? And I would still help off Rodmanovic. He's just come back in the game. I'm not allowing Kobe Bryant to go to the rim without help. He did it at the end of game three and hit a couple of big buckets with Ray Allen, the only man on him. Bryant against Pierce. Drives in. There's Garnett. Bryant puts it in. Top shot. And it's a two-point game. 17 for Kobe Bryant. Ten of them here in the fourth quarter. You've got to post Garnett here, Mark. Posey. He's had a big game. Ray Allen kicks it out. Posey for three. It's good. James Posey from downtown. And it's a five-point Celtic lead. 18 points for Posey off the bench. Bryant makes a three. Drives again on Pierce. Back out. Fisher knocks it down. A two-pointer. His foot was on the line. And that's a critically critical mistake by Fisher. Face the floor properly. You're going to shoot it from that distance. Make it be a three. 92-89. Three-point game under a minute to go. And Pierce able to draw the foul on Bryant. Not a lot of contact, but he played it up nicely, and he'll go to the line for two. Bryant didn't like to call his fourth personal. 
There's a bump, but he sold it very well. Well, he did sell it. I mean, he's not the first guy to sell a foul like that. Bottom line, though, the Celtics have made every crucial play offensively. They've taken care of the basketball and gotten high percentage looks. And let's take a look at right now. Uh, Verizon. the play of James Posey. Ray Allen and the big three have been excellent. But Posey with 18 points. He's one of two Celtics who already have a championship. He was part of the Heat's title team back in 2006. Sam sells the other. But again, another role player steps up with a huge game. What I love about it, he's a battle-tested guy on both ends of the floor. Not afraid to take shots and then a lockdown defender. Has stepped up since Perkins left the ball game. Pierce now to the line, and we say it all the time, how often the games of such magnitude come down to knocking down your free throws. The Celtics can hit their free throws. They'll give themselves that needed breathing room. Pierce calmly sinks that one. Well, we saw Shane Batty of the Houston Rockets defend Kobe Bryant as well as we've ever seen anybody. I think Paul Pierce tonight has matched it and raised it. Kobe Bryant 6 of 19. Pierce has performed admirably at both ends of the floor in the playoffs. Two clutch free throws there. Five-point game with 46.8 remaining. Now it's critical you do not give up a three-point shot or a three-point play. Bryant to Gasol. That was quick. 94-91. One possession game. Garnett, trouble getting it in. Gets it to Ray Allen. Lakers do not need to foul yet. Vujicic, heavy pressure. Taking as much time off the clock. Here comes the double team. Allen, he wants to go to the line. You can tell he wants the ball in his hands. Allen on the drive, gets to the basket. Lefty layup, banks it in. And it's a five-point game with 16.4 remaining. But this is a critical mistake. They inbounded before they took the timeout. So now they can't advance the ball unless they take another timeout. So a timeout called after Ray Allen with a huge move to the basket. Let's take a look at Allen. Well, waves off the screen by Kevin Garnett, says, I want to play one-on-one -on -one with Vujicic. It's time to dance. This is for all the marbles, clears the floor, and then the blow-by, and finishes with the left hand. Ray Allen has played the entire game, hasn't sat for a second, 19 points and nine rebounds. As Allen, Pierce, and Garnett all playing in their first NBA Finals, seeing they've got such a golden opportunity right now to go up three to one in these NBA Finals. And you see the look on Kobe Bryant's face. All right, 15.7 seconds remaining, Jeff, down by five. They've got to shoot three. Well, I'm going to take another timeout to advance the ball up the court so I can get into the front court. Then I'm getting the ball to Kobe Bryant in the middle of the floor and have him drive the ball to the rim. And then if something good happens and they give help, kick it out for the three. If not, right at the basket as quick as possible. They're watching Paul Pierce defend Kobe Bryant the last couple of plays. He's allowed him to get to the three-point line where he could lift. If you Paul Pierce, what you want to do is meet him above it and force him to drive, and he pressures the clock. And the Lakers have seen a 24-point lead disappear. Sasha Vujicic so emotional on the court and obviously during that timeout and as the Lakers right now desperate down by five with 15.7 remaining and Jeff as you said Phil Jackson will use another timeout to advance the ball again the rule is if you advance the ball after gaining a defensive rebound and then call timeout you're inbounding the ball from that spot where you call the timeout but if you get the defensive rebound and immediately call time, you can advance the ball to the front court. And that's the mistake, because now the Lakers only have one timeout left. So if they want to play this, take it to the basket, and then a foul game, you can only advance the ball one more time. 
Well, Celtics have outscored the Lakers over the last quarter and a half, 46 to 21. And if I'm the Celtics, I'm switching out and trying to deny Bryant. I want the ball to go into anybody but Bryant. And you don't want to help off a three-point shooter for yourself. Brad Manovich, watch for the inbound guy to get it right back. Brad Manovich, a good three-point shooter out to Vujicic. Vujicic, that's a two-pointer. Off the mark, no good. Gasol, back out. Vujicic to Bryant. Steps back, that's a two. Short, no good. Rebound. Vujicic knocked out of bounds. Saved it, but right to Garnett. And House is fouled with 3.6 remaining. And the Celtics are going to take a 3-1 lead in these finals. What an amazing turnaround here in game four. And the crowd starting to head for the exits. They are stunned at this comeback by the Celtics. Good defense by the Celtic. Paul Pierce handing off Kobe Bryant to Garnett. He denies him the basketball, and then once he catches it off the missed shot, forces him into a tough one. That's just solid defense by the Celtics. And you can't say enough about the job that Eddie House has done off the bench, substituting for Ron. 11 points for House off the bench. Posey with 18 off the bench. And Paul Pierce starting to celebrate as his team will go up 3-1. to one. And as we mentioned, no team in NBA Finals history has ever come back from being down 3-1 to one to win the championship. And this crowd so disappointed in a game that started great for L.A. The Celtics turn in one of the great comebacks in NBA playoff history. Down 24 in the second quarter, down 20 in the third. They come back and win game four. Just a tremendous performance on the road. Pierce, again, grew up a Laker fan. Such an emotional return for him. As the Lakers go back to their locker room, obviously so disappointed. Let's send it to Michelle. Paul, one of the most remarkable comebacks in NBA Finals history. How do you explain, after being down 21 in the first and 24, how you guys did this? I think, baby, we sucked it up. You know, we, 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 we came with it. We said we weren't going to back down. You know what I said coming in the third quarter? I said, don't look at the score, fellas. You know, we just got to go out there and compete and, and don't look at the score and see what happens at the end of the day. I was part of the fourth quarter comeback in 2002, one of the greatest comebacks in NBA history. So I know what it is to dig deep inside and go out there and get a win, and we was able to do it tonight. You had so much great help from your teammates, Posey. Ray Allen with a great late bucket. What happened on that play? Uh, I'll say that again. Ray Allen's oh. big bucket. Oh, you know, we just spread the floor. We had shooters on the court, and we knew they couldn't help. So Ray Allen saw it. Uh, Kevin set a pick, and he just drove down the lane. It was wide open. He laid it up. And that pretty much ice. It was a team effort, but it was the defense. It was the defense that got it done second half. And you were guarding uh, Kobe Bryant most of the late part of this game. What was that like for you? Well, I wanted to make him work. I, I said I wanted to come out and guard him, start the third, and just make him work. Uh, I, I don't know. You know, I, I take pride in my defense. I know championships. It's, it's a hard thing to do, and I don't want to guard the best tonight. You know what, Paul, last thing for you. No team in NBA Finals history has come back from a 3-1 deficit to win the finals. What do you make of that that stat? Well, it can always happen, and we're not counting on that statistic. We want to go out here in this on Father's Day. Congratulations. Thank you, baby. All right, Michelle, that will be Sunday back here at the Staples Center. The player of the game vote presented by T-Mobile. Fans selected Paul Pierce is tonight's player of the game. Well, this one was a total team effort by the Boston Celtics. As he said defensively, Lakers scored just 33 points in the second half after they had 58 in the first two quarters. And remember, L.A. up by 20 with 5.50 remaining in the third. Celtics slowly chipping away at a great run in the third quarter, cut it to two entering the fourth. Finally took their first lead of the game with under five minutes to go in the fourth. And the Celtics can celebrate. So now again, game five will be right back here on Sunday. And it'll be on ABC. Our coverage begins at 8.30 Eastern. And then tip off shortly after nine. Lakers need to win to send the series back to Boston, which will be the site for game six and seven. An incredible comeback. One of the best in the history of the NBA playoffs. 97-91, the Celtics win, they lead the finals.
three games to one. Now except on the West Coast, stay tuned for your late local news. Nightline and Jimmy Kimmel over most of these ABC stations. Complete post-game coverage of tonight's game. Go to Sports Center For Jeff Ben Gundy, Mark Jackson, Michelle Tafoya, and our entire terrific ABC crew, this is Mike Breen saying so long from L.A. You're watching ABC, home of the NBA Finals. Shot clock at five. Rondo left open, his jumper. And Odom.